Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. 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 And this is Friday, April, or Friday, March 30th, and Saturday, March 31st at 7 p.m. And they have free admission. But they also sent in a CD from last year. So I just want So if anybody wants to look at it, yeah. it's right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. I, I, I just opened mine this morning. Oh. So, but yeah, no, that, that's right. And we have uh, that's down at Dallas City. Yeah. And uh, I put a poster on the bulletin board. Good. Okay, no one wants to go with that. That's available. That's available. Um, good, thank you. Anything else? Cool. See, here's the thing, you know, I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to announce that too. But the, the thing that, the, the thing that, that, that I, I saw it, the one thing that I, that I was, that came to my mind is, I can't tell. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like it's a good, I mean, it really does sound like a good program. But it, you know, it but as, as individual members will, will have to decide if we can go or not. But I know for myself, I can't. Yeah. I can't myself tell. But they sent you a CD. <laughs> well, we can watch it if we want. But I tell you what, you know, they just could be on the screen. I'm glad they're doing it down there. And um, it's just one of the things that, that they're doing there. It's really uh, working well. They're really doing a good job of evangelizing down there. But anyway, if you want to go, uh, feel free to go. Uh, and that's the Good Friday, that'll be good Friday and then the Saturday right after. And so, uh, and the vote at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And uh, they, they, from what I understand, the people who have fun, they put on a real good play. Mm -hmm. They throw it <clears throat> I still can't go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like what people say to me so, where are you going for Christmas?
and will continue with our worship as God in your bulletin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, from all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom I'm seeking to you. Clutch the thoughts of my hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. According to the Lord God, in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sin before God and before one another. Amen. Moses, first, first from God. God. I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done, and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come before your throne of grace, that I may receive mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ wants to die for us, and for his saints, God forgives us all our sins. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, our Redeemer, in our, our weakness, weakness we have failed, failed to be your messengers of forgiveness. Jesus and hope in the world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, that we may follow your commands and proclaim your great love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson is from the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning the first verse. And Moses, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes the following. Now, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your kindred, and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Here is the reading of the first lesson. Psalm this morning is Psalm 2, it's on page 215. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt? Yeah. And the princes flock together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath. And his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king. Upon my holy hill, Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day am I your son. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations of your inheritance. And the inheritance of your possessions. You shall crush them with an iron rod. And shatter them like a piece of fire. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear. And with trembling bow before him. Lest he be angry and he perish. For his wrath is quickly, quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take bread of you, Jim. Starting in verse 10. 
and Isaiah writes the following by the Holy Spirit. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear that, O house of David. Is it too little for you to worry men that you worry my God alone? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive a fair son. You shall, you shall call his name Emmanuel. And he shall eat curds and honey, when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. Here is the reading of the second lesson. Please pray. In the Gospel from the Gospel of St. Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. And the evangelist Mark writes the following by the Holy Spirit. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could find him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are men. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us into the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirit came out and entered the pit, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, <coughs> rushed down the steep path into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. And people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon possessed man, the one who had the had legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon possessed man and the pigs. They began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on them. And he went away. And began to proclaim in the Catholics how much Jesus had done for him and everyone more. The Gospel of Mongol. You may see. Chapter, 
And we are told this account of a deliverance where Jesus came over to the other side. He delivered a man that had a legion of demons. And one of the things that we find in this account is certainly how demons act or work in human life. And we could spend a lot of time on that today, but one of the things I, I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to consider is actually three things and how they apply to our lives today. And there are three points that we find in this particular gospel lesson that we would do well to remember. The first thing that we see is that this demon-possessed man was beyond human help. There was no human help for him. And people had tried to help him. They tried to find him. You know, nowadays, if you go into a, um, some mental hospitals, what do they do? Sometimes they have restraints that they put on people. And many times these people not only have psychological problems, but they have demon problems. And so they restrain them so they don't hurt themselves. But this man was so strong because of the demonic entity within him that he would break the chains and he would run. They tried to subdue him to keep him from cutting himself. And there was nothing that anyone could do for this man. He was beyond human help. And that's important for us to consider. You know why? Because there are times, aren't there, when we meet people who are beyond human help, we have lots of resources in our culture. We have great doctors. We have psychiatrists, psychologists, we've got medicine, we have counselors. We have all kinds of things to help people. But in the end, isn't it true that there are times when no matter what we do, no matter what wisdom we have, you just can't help somebody. They're beyond human help. There are things our human wisdom and human strength cannot do. And that is true for a great many people. You'll find people who are uh, addicted to a variety of things. They'll try 12-step programs. They'll try methadone. They'll try all kinds of things. And in the end, they're still caught up in the addiction. There are all kinds of people who are involved in, in a number of things uh, with regards to immorality, witchcraft, the occult, uh, or maybe they're cutting themselves. And no matter what the help is offered, it doesn't help them. There's a time for us to recognize that no matter how much we want to help someone, there's a time when we are beyond human Help. That's true for others. Sometimes it's even true for us. We can be so sick that the doctor said, you all because there's nothing we can do for you. Let's understand then that there are things that human beings can't fix. That human strength cannot take care of. And why is that important for us to see? Because we live in a secular humanistic society where we tend to believe that if there's going to be help, it has to come from two places. It has to come from some human agency out there, and it has to come from ourselves. Well, let me say right now, that is not realistic. Because in the end, there's going to come a time in all of our lives where we are beyond human strength and help. But the good news in this story and the reason it's good news is because it's real. Even though there are people who are beyond human help, you're not beyond the help of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of the Most High. He is the one who is the source of all life and help and peace and righteousness. And no matter how bad things are, no matter how possessed you are, this man was possessed by a legion of demons. A legion. Now, some people... Misunderstand. They think a, 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 a centurion in the Roman army was in charge of a hundred people. So some people think a hundred in this guy. No, a legion 
You know how many men were in the legion? 6,000. So if this is a literal name, I mean, if this is exactly how many demons were there, this man was totally and completely tormented. But no matter how possessed you are, how oppressed you are, no matter where you are, Jesus has the answer to your problem. Jesus has the power to save. Jesus is the one who shows up on the shore of your life and the demons start to tremble because they know their time is short. Jesus is the one who shows up and brings healing into your inner being and into your body. Jesus is the one who has come to set the captives free and to release the prisoners from the dark places so that we can walk with God and have eternal life. Jesus is the one who has the power to do for you what you and the world cannot do for you. The first thing we learn then is that although we can be beyond human help and others can, beyond, can be beyond human help, there is one who is the Almighty and He is well able to save and His name is Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Son of the Most High and He has come to set us free and to bring us into a redeemed life with the Father so that we are no longer those who are oppressed by the devil but those who live in the victory of the cross and in the victory of his word. He is well able to save. Never allow anyone to tell you that you're beyond hope. As long as there's Jesus alive, you have plenty of hope. He can burst into your life and change things like that. That's the first thing to remember. But that brings us to number two. The second point that we need to see here is that after this man was saved and delivered, Jesus just didn't walk off and leave him by himself. That's very important. Because you can be saved, you can be delivered, but you know what? There's still evil forces in the world. There's still temptation out there that's trying to bring you back in, into the darkness that you knew, trying to bring you back into the unholy and evil habits that you had. You can be changed and you can be saved. But how about staying saved? How about staying delivered? How does that happen? Because the forces around you are still against you, even though they're no longer in you. How do you stay saved? How do you stay delivered? We find that here in today's gospel lesson. Because the people that lost the herd of pigs, they were lost and told to the city. And we got to remember that in this story, time is condensed. So we're probably talking about several hours or even a couple of days. And then finally, the the, everybody who's heard it in the city, they come out and check this thing out. And, and they see the man who had the legion of demons in him. We find three things. Sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed, and in his right mind. What that means, first of all, he was clothed, which means Jesus had clothed him with a new life. He was in his right mind, so now his mind was able to receive, his heart was able to receive from God for the first time in his life, but he was also doing something else. What was it? He was sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was getting filled up on the Word. He was being taught. Jesus was telling him what to do and how to do it. He was filling him up with the Scriptures and with his power. And that's very important because see, Jesus says in another place, that when a demon comes out of a person, it roams around dry places looking for somewhere to rest. And finding none, it will return and say, I'm going to return to the hole that I had before. That's the human host. And when it returns, it finds the human host swept, ordered, and empty. Now, being swept and ordered is not a problem. 
When God comes to your life, He's going to put you back in order and He's going to clean you up. The problem is empty. If you don't have someone in you, an occupant, those demons are going to come back. You're going to get swept back into the old habits. You're going to get swept back into, 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 into the darkness. You're going to become even worse off than you were before. So what is Jesus doing? He's putting the occupant, the Spirit of God, into this man as he's speaking the word into him. So that he will not return to his old way of life, but will continue to move out and further into the light. That's something that's very important for us to see. Because you don't have to have been possessed by demons to know that when you got saved, and you started moving for God, there are all kinds of temptations that wanted to bring you back into what you were doing before. And when, when we are filled with the Word of God and filled with His presence, that is the protection we need to move out into the light and die completely to the old. So what our Lord Jesus is sharing with us here is that once we've been saved and brought into His presence and brought into the reality of His kingdom, don't just run off. Sit in his feet. Listen to what he has to say. What that means for us is get to church. Get the Bible study. Read the Bible. Listen to what the Spirit is saying. I remember when I got saved, the one thing that I found that I had a hunger for was reading the scriptures. I would sit down for hours and just read it. It was like eating food. I would get filled up and the Holy Spirit would be giving wisdom on how to apply that. We need that. So that we can continue to move out into the light and not get caught back into the darkness. And some people will say, well, can that happen, Pastor? Can you get caught back in the darkness? Yes, we can. You read all the letters, all of them. All of them. All of them are addressed to Christians. And all of them give warning that if we don't take heed to the word of God and if we're not careful to walk according to him, guess what happens? We fall back into the darkness. You can lose it. And so one of the things we're told here is that the way to move forward is to sit at the feet of Jesus and receive the infill of his word and his spirit so that we can walk into the light and away from the darkness. So that's the second thing we see. But finally, the third thing we see, which is important for us to take too, is that once we're saved and once we're, we're filled with the oxygen, the Holy Spirit, the word of God, Jesus has a plan for your life. He has a ministry. And it won't be like necessarily anybody else's. But if you will do what he says, you may not see it yourself. You may not live to see it. But when great things are going to come, he's going to use the seed that you sow to bring revival and, and bring people into salvation and into relationship with Jesus. How do we see that here? Well, so the people of that district, it was called the Decapolis, which means the ten, the ten towns and the ten cities. They were so frightened at what Jesus had done that they told him to leave. He wasn't welcome there. And Jesus, being the gentleman that he is, was getting ready to get the boat and back over the other side. And this man, who had the demons in him, rushed over to Jesus and grabbed him and said, Oh no, I'm coming with you. That's only natural. When you met the Savior, when you met the Lord, you never want to leave His side. That's how good He is. And yet Jesus says to him, No matter, can't come with me. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to go back home to your friends. I want you to tell them everything that the Lord has done for you, how He's had mercy on you. And so this man went back into the towns and began to share with people that Jesus Christ saved him and made him a new man and that they can have they can have what he gave him. They can have a new life. They can be saved. 
They can know the God of Israel because one of the things we need to remember is that that side of the of the of the Sea of Galilee was more often than not Gentile. In other words, they weren't following the God of Israel anyway. And to have this light that the God of Israel is the real God and that Jesus is the Son of God was such a light in that area that you know what happened? Jesus, Jesus left, but we'll find in Mark and in the other Gospels that he's going to return to that place. And when he returns, he gets an entirely different reception than, than when he came the first time. When he returns, there are like thousands of people who are saying, Oh, Jesus, pick me, pick me, pick me. And they come to listen to his teaching. They come to get delivered. They come to get healed. There's a video of the 4,000. And people get saved. And it began with this man just sharing the gospel with his friends and, and his neighbors. And when they looked at his old life and saw how he was now, they could not deny that something awesome had happened to him. That he had met truly the living God because none of their gods could help him. But Jesus did. And that's important for us to see. Because, you know, if we want to see the next generation saved, or we want to see our community saved, then we need to be sharing what we know about Jesus too. We need to let our friends and our neighbors know. We need to share how God has delivered us from the power of darkness that brought us into light. Because, you see, just like in this gospel lesson, when Jesus came again, he is coming again. Only this time he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. And it's his desire that when he returns, that people would be rejoicing at his return. As opposed to being in fear and dread at the judgment that's to come. And that requires us to do what this man did. And that is share with others what Jesus did for him. Not everyone will believe. Not everyone will be saved. We're not in charge of that. What we're in charge of doing is sharing what we know. Sharing what is done. And let the Holy Spirit take over. There will be people who will hear, take it hard, and come to faith. So today, let's remember, there are lots of people in our community who are beyond human help. But that's not a problem with Jesus. Jesus can save anyone at any time. He has the power to do it. But let's remember too that when people are saved, they need to sit at the feet of Jesus and receive from Him what they need so that they can walk forward into the kingdom and not be caught back into the old paths and fall back into darkness. And then finally, for all of us, let's remember that we are to share with others what Jesus has done for us so that when he returns, people are ready to meet him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word and, and for what you have shared with us here today. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to it, plant the people in us. I pray to you, Lord, that you would grant us divine appointments to share your love with others and bring them to saving faith. That this community would be shaken and awakened to Jesus Christ as Lord and turn to you in them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing our next hymn. It's 543 and the Lord of the Lord. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, it's 543 and the Lord of the Lord. <clears throat>
us our faith into the words of the night of the Supreme Court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We believe in one God, the Father, and the Almighty. Lord, 
uh, that you would bring your righteousness and peace to Jerusalem. Let God be the time when they recognize you, the one who they fear is mourn over you as for an only son. Be cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, join in your church as the one we man. Bring the Holy Spirit revival to the people of Israel and save your people, the remnant of Israel. Be with your congregations, Lord, in Israel. Grant them the grace to preach your word with power while you lift up your hand to heal with miracles, wonders, and signs intending that they would see that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father, and they would say finally, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. Prayer. And Lord Jesus, Lord, we pray for the healing that you purchased on Calvary's so hill. Thank you, Lord. That has all been provided by the cross, by your resurrection and ascension. Thank you, Lord, that this is a covenant promise that you made, and we receive that promise in good faith, Lord. So, Lord, we, we just ask that you would bring that healing into the lives of Roger Rollins, Ashton Heisler, and Werner, Jane Lynn and Sweden, Bryce Johnson, Robert Empty, Jerry Rosecrans, Betty Vesterso, Julian Westby, Marilyn Morstan, Bruce Tilts, Helen Beck, Doug Sorry, Oliver Sorry, Kathy Schaefer, Douglas Hurston, Ruth Kahara, Monica Parks, Dorothy Johnson, Gianna Kafar, Mary James Lovegren, Joe Freitag, Carolyn Resendez, Josie Uthke, Norman Vanderpam, Doug Hasselton, Laurel Harrison, Rose Winkler, Sandra Koenig, Priola Lundquist, Jalen Johnson, Joanne Little Ricoso, Gordon Coward, Stephanie Oyston, Ruthie Overbold, Palmer Lindblom, Scott Musso. We also pray, Lord, for military personnel. Michael Rasmussen, Shane Kelly, Patrick O'Malley, Kayla Dyer, Kevin and Eliza McKenzie, Scott Mark Riley, Trevor Simmons, Jonathan Defoe, Isaiah Curry, David Burns, Sammy East, Riley Lake to see him, a hearty head. And we ask your blessings on all those who mention how we're all allowed for in our hearts. Lord, I pray for our brothers and sisters in Gilgit again. I want to also pray for Aiden Sandstream and all of them that touch her life. I pray for revival uh, through her and around her, Lord Jesus. And, and Lord, I also want to pray for a brother in Nicaragua, the old farmer's son, Oscar. He's demon-possessed or oppressed or whatever it is. You know what it is, Lord. And I just pray for deliverance for him, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Praise God. Thank yes, you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, in, uh, in that respect, uh, Lord, we, uh, we know that there are a lot of, of children, especially uh, girls, uh, in our schools who are cutting themselves. And Lord, uh, we just rebuke those evil spirits in Jesus' name. Praise God. And command them to depart from them and that you would give them, Lord, a, a clean heart, a clean mind, and a clean spirit. That they would stop entering themselves and they would know the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Lord, we also um, pray healing for Kevin Cormick, released with cancer in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Salvation for Bobby Holt and Alan uh, Holt, and also for uh, Cyrus Brown. And we pray for healing for Pastor uh, Jeff Johns, for uh, Jane Lauder, and for Mother Jack. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of you. We pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves our time and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them with the same of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the night when Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, came back, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, in the freedom. Do this for the remembrance of it. And then after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all the earth, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of it. And as we are his disciples on earth, let us praise our Lord Jesus God in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.